All right, part two of a uh, Colt single action army time. We did our first video, just high level overview, how to uh, clear it, handle it, um, look at it, kind of go from there. So now I want to go ahead and do a complete field strip of these guys. Um, it's not as hard as you may think, and in reality, there's not much to it. You'll need a couple screwdrivers. Uh, I think two should be more than enough for anything you need to do. And um, let's go ahead and get started. So let's make sure this guy's empty. Put it in a half cock, look uh, at the chambers. They're all good. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the base pin. Talked about that before. Just this one I mentioned has an issue that it's a little bit tight, but we will fix that in a different video. So um, let's go ahead and remove that base pin. Open up the loading gate. You got your uh, cylinder out. Why not? Let's go ahead and remove the grips. You want to use quality screwdrivers just to minimize any uh, marring or anything like that. Um, Colts have a pretty Pretty finish, but a delicate finish. So you want to do what you can to preserve it. Um, next thing I want to like to remove is go ahead and remove the uh, uh, ejector area. There's a simple flat screw right there. Just go ahead and uh, begin unscrewing that guy. And this will remove the entire um, the entire ejecting housing area, along with the spring and the uh, and the, uh, the the rod, I suppose, that's what this guy's called. Put that guy right there. You can, the barrel is entirely kind of, I don't know, free float is that word, there's a screw uh, drilled into it. Um, let's go ahead and remove the um, base pin screws and pin. Normally you have to start these on both sides. Uh, the other guys are already loose, so if you just begin screwing this, Unscrewing this, it'll just uh, should loosen up and free up entirely. Almost just a hair more. And I am holding the other side just to make sure it um, stays out. So that gives you your uh, kind of two pins there, along with a spring in the middle. And if you have a problem, as I mentioned before, with tension, 99% uh, of the time it's that spring there. So we'll put that aside. So we have our uh, uh, barrel and our frame left so far. Let's go ahead and remove the back strap. There are three screws, two uh, in the back, one guy at the bottom. I like freeing up the uh, bottom guy first, and you'll instantly kind of notice some of the tension uh, releasing there. Now we can go ahead and remove these two guys. Um, on the factory, at least in the later versions, they had kind of a rubber washers in there. I think they were red. I don't know how you know credible that color is forever, but so if you see those, make sure to put those back in place. If you damage those during your disassembly, um, go ahead and replace those. I know most of the kind of major uh, gun websites and company carries those. You can always obviously reach out to Colt if you need to, but it is considered a disposable item. Won't impact the value or anything like that. It just provides a better seal um, so that you don't have to use Loctite or worry about any of these screws coming loose. I think we're almost there. Let's go ahead and finish these two off. Okay, that guy's out. And this guy is now out. Let's finish off the bottom guy. And so far these screws serve no no purpose other than holding the, the back strap on. They don't do anything with respect to the the gun's action. So now we have our mainspring. This is the primary tension spring. So go ahead and remove that. Be a little careful. It's not under too much tension, but there's a screw here at the bottom. Just go ahead and remove that and you'll kind of feel um, everything uh, loosening up from there. And then you can, once that's done, you can kind of just finish them off this way. Some folks uh, use that to do a trigger job or lighten it up. I personally don't recommend that. Um, starting with the bottom, let's go ahead and remove the um, trigger guard assembly. There's a screw in the front, which is slightly different than the two in the back. So if this, uh, if you drop your screws or these become loose, um, just look for the two that are similar, and those go in the back right here. And obviously the two that are the one that's different would go in the front.
And like I said, a lot of these parts have a really nice gluing finish, so you do want to be careful where possible to make sure that you don't damage anything. Okay. So and then you notice the three screws on the actual frame itself. Uh, actually, before we get to there, you will notice uh, a spring right here. I'm not 100% sure what that's called. There may be uh, the guards or something like that, but this spring needs to come out. If you go ahead and just unscrew this larger screw right here, and that'll free up this flat spring. I'm trying to remember exactly what that's called. I'm not sure. But remember, the longer part uh, goes towards the trigger there. So the longer part faces the trigger. Okay. So let's go ahead and remove the bolt, trigger, and hammer. Uh, there's three screws here. Let's start with the bolt for their left screw. Just uh, unscrew that. And your bolt will just kind of fall down. You have to give it a nudge. There it goes. I can feel it in there. Actually, let's do things a little differently. Let's remove the trigger. I think they're going to be uh, slightly connected. So let's go ahead and remove that trigger. A little stubborn, but there we go. Let's remove that. And then that bolt piece falls right out. Uh, last but not least, the actual hammer itself. There will be a lever coming out with it. So just, uh, it's not under a lot of spring tension, but just FYI. So remove that last larger screw. And then the lever will come out with the, um, right here along with the arm. And there's a, more or less, the, the only other screw we could remove is this guy. And that will remove the plunger from the uh, loading gate area, but I don't I don't envision a time you would ever need to do that. So there you go, there's a fully field stripped um, Colt single action. Uh, as I mentioned, if you have problems with the hammer or the arm, a lot of these parts are very easily replaced. Um, so for example, if this guy breaks or snaps, you can go ahead and uh, order a new one from one of the many companies, just put them in. Same thing with the trigger, uh, same thing with your bolt if this gets uh, worn out too much. And, um, if your contact points and your hammer, right, when you do the clicks, the standard clicks, you know, there's the four, as I mentioned, full cock position. So the uh, the trigger part, obviously, is very important um, with respect to the hammer. So over time, that's expected to wear. And when it does, like I said, if you need to remove, replace these parts, you can go ahead and order them. There's no need to rush to a gunsmith. So I'll, you don't really need any special tools, just a screwdriver. And there's a fully uh, field strip disassembled cold single action. Um, you can put it back together however you'd like. Um, let's go ahead and put the um, ejector housing in first. So remember it's going to need to come out like this I believe. Yep. Spring here that I suppose over time will need to be replaced. Um, there's not a lot of tension on the spring so it's not not too bad but let's go ahead and replace. Put that guy back in place. Line the spring up in that cavity. And this sits kind of over there, over the screw. Go ahead and drop that screw in there. Uh, free that part up and just screw that in. Just um, kind of, I would just hand tighten it, not too much more. Go ahead and take a look at it, make sure it comes out. She does, returns to place. Okay, we're good to go there. Let's go ahead and put our uh, hammer and arm back. So from kind of facing in this direction, go ahead and put the arm in. The arm slides into this place right here, the bottom of the gun. Then you just uh, move the hammer up until it lines up. Turn the screw, hand tighten that. If there's no washer in there, go ahead and uh, place it. And if there is, just make sure it's on there. Same thing, hand tighten, get a quarter turn more. So let's make sure we do this right this time. Let's go ahead and put the bolt in. I think I got that right. Let's go ahead and put the, the bolt back in. Should stick out like so. These two screws are identical. All you have to do is make sure it goes through that cavity. And tighten that guy. Okay, trigger. Simple part. Same thing. Put that guy in there. 
line it up with the uh, cross pin. A little bit of a finesse work in there. Okay, tighten that. And these are more or less all of the right here, with the exception of the last spring. These are all the operating um, items that really go into it. Remember, as I mentioned before, the longer piece faces the hammer, so make sure it's uh, in that direction. Okay. Uh, screw in the guy, keeps him in place. And obviously hex screws or other screws would be easier, but these are more traditional. And that's why I think we use what we have. Okay. Uh, let's return the uh, trigger guard. Nice and straightforward, just line up all the screws. The three, one in the front, two in the rear, one on the front, slightly shorter. Like I said, if you so if you lost these or um, misplaced them, that's how you tell the difference. I can tell this guy in the front is going to be a little bit of a, a little challenge lining up. You don't want to strip anything, so if something's not going in, just stop and um, start over again. They're supposed to go in smoothly. You're not supposed to muscle anything in. So tighten all these up. Same thing, just hand tighten it. And then depending on the loads you shoot, go ahead and monitor. And if M1 has a tendency to come loose, apply a little extra torque on that. Uh, so let's return our last kind of operating component there, the mainspring. I mentioned before, some folks loosen this guy up for a trigger job. I don't recommend it. Um, I don't recommend re uh, removing the screw. If you need to go to a lighter spring for whatever reason, I would do that instead of just you know backing this screw out. So here, we can do our first function check to see how our disassembly is going. Um, we should have full action here. Everything looks good. At the half cock position, notice the bolt uh, disappears or clears the clears the um, the frame. Everything looks good. Let's put the uh, back strap in. I like uh, putting the bottom screw, tightening that up first. That tends to align parts a little bit better. And then the two. Let's go. Let's go eighty percent of the way in, and then these two screws. Oops, sorry, I almost did that off camera. And then these two screws. Accordingly, these are slightly on the uh, longer side. Show it to this guy. There we go. And then finish and just uh, make sure the bottom guy's tightened up once those two are aligned. Okay, so let's um, put in the uh, underlock screws. I always get them backwards, but I believe they go in like this. One guy with a spring actuates, and then the other, just make sure you line up the right uh, screw components, and then just hand tighten that. I am not going to tighten all these, this guy in 100% of the way only because I need to replace that spring. And I'll be doing that next. So just enough to kind of keep it going. Let's go ahead and put the cylinder back in. Open up the loading gate, put that guy in. A little bit of a kind of finesse here. Close loading gate, depress the base pin spring. Get him in there, okay. Half cock, everything spins. Looks good. Put your uh, grips back in and you're done. So there's a full disassembly and reassembly of a Colt single action army. There's a part that's broken. Like I said, you just can more or less replace it yourself. So uh, anything more serious, you probably would have to take it to a gunsmith, but for everything else, you should be able to do on your own. Thanks.